So there's 23 students total, but um, their peers actually chose the five um, the five speakers that we actually have today. And so now I'm going to bring up my second spe uh, speaker, Teresa. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Teresa Ng, and I'm currently working under two PhD students in the Guerrero group working on the examination of an intramolecular heck reaction for the synthesis of uridine, a complex furanosteroid. So as a, for some background, viridin is a furanosteroid, which is a steroid with an extra fused furan ring. So if you look at the pictures, uh, figure one and two, you can see the general structure of a steroid and compare it to the structure of viridin. You can see that the A, B, C, D rings are the same, except that in viridin, there's an extra furan ring between the A and the B ring. The bioactivity of uridin is still unknown. However, we do believe that it can behave similarly to other members of the Friano fa family, such as Wurtmannin. So Wurtmannin has been known to inhibit PI3Ks, and PI3Ks are the phosphatidyl inositide 3 kinase. And those are important in cell signaling pathways. So if you look, if our bodies are in the presence of cancer cells, you can see that well, Wurtmannin would covalently bind to the active site of the enzyme, of the enzyme, and that would prohibit the PI3Ks from functioning normally. So that would prevent the cancer cells from entering in the cell signaling pathways. And if you look at the structures figure two and three, you can see that the structure of viridin and the structure of Wurtmannin are very similar. So this is a good thing because that shows that viridin can actually behave similarly and covalently bind to the active site of PI3Ks as well. And Sorensen in 2004 has previously made viridin, but he had to use 29 steps and yielded a racemic mixture of, which is a one-to-one -one ratio of both enantiomers. And enantiomers are basically molecules that have a, car that have a mirror image that, when you, that are non-superposable. And the best example would be our hands. If you look at your own hands, you can see that they are mirror images of each other. However, if you put one hand on top of the other, none of your fingers actually line up. And this becomes a problem because racemic mixtures are typically very difficult to separate and it's also very expensive to separate. So that's why for our lab, our goal was to synthesize viridin using a convergent synthesis. So this allows us to make two separate molecules and combine them together and carrying that throughout other for further steps of chemistry. And we hope to have the synthesis be we're, we hope to finish synthesizing viridin in 15 to 16 steps in an, in an enantial selective fashion using different chiral fox ligands to, to determine whether the methyl group is going to stick in front of the plane or behind the plane. And using this convergence synthesis, we're also hoping to create analogs with similar bioactivity. So I've included the scheme of viridin. So this is very condensed, but you can see that there's two separate molecules that were made. And taking those two separate molecules, we were able to couple them together. And the reaction on the bottom is actually the key reaction of what I've been studying this summer. So if you can see the picture over here, um, you can see that the methyl group is sticking outside of the plane right now. But that all is determined by the Fox ligand that's in this box. And so before we could even study the effects of the Fox ligand, um, the PhD students first, synth um, first commercially bought one of the enantiomers of the ligand, which is this one. He bought the R enantiomer and subjected that into the HEC reaction. And we were able to take the optical rotation of our product, and we got a positive 29.91. And because they were able to commercially buy the R enantiomer, I was given the task of synthesizing the S enantiomer. And we were able to study the effects of that. And after carrying it through several steps, we were able to subject the ligand with the hydroxyl group into the HEC reaction and got the optical rotation of our product, which was a value of negative 22.64. So the positive and negative numbers do not correlate specifically to which enantiomer of the product we wanted to make. However, it does show that the R enantiomer gives us one, the positive value, while the hydroxyl or the S enantiomer gives us the negative value. That shows that we're making 
one specific enantiomer from one specific enantiomer of the ligand, if that's not confusing. Um, but we actually found out um, last week that the R enantiomer actually gives us the desired S enantiomer of the product that we wanted. So that's a really good thing because now that we know the R enantiomer is what determines the stereochemistry of the methyl group on our product, we can now start manipulating and using bulky groups, hopefully, to determine whether or not we could get a higher yield of one specific enantiomer over the other enantiomer. So as our future goals, the study of the effects of the different R enantiomers are still ongoing. However, we're just trying to try to synthesize different R enantiomers with certain bulky groups in order to determine a higher enantial selectivity. And as a summary, Virden is part of the complex furanosteroid family, and, the thought, and it has been thought to behave similarly to Wartmannin. And synthesizing Virden allows us to synthesize other Virden derivatives using the convergence synthesis. And the R enantiomer of the Fox ligand gives us the desired S enantiomer of Virden that we would like. And I would like to thank Matthew Dobell, Jeffrey Ng, and Carlos Guerrero for assisting me in this, uh, the research over the summer, and Cal IT2 and UCSD for providing me with this opportunity. Thank you, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, thank you.